Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Katie Bishop, and on behalf of this congregation of faith, we welcome you today to worship. As we get started, would you join with me in prayer? Lord, we are always seeking guidance for the journey you have placed us on. We would like it if everything was spelled out so we knew exactly what to expect, but that's not the way life works. You remind us in the story of the 10 bridesmaids that we should always be ready to seek you and to serve you. Open our hearts today and remind us of your awesome love for us throughout the generations. For this we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, make a worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, make a worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every You 
see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop, you never stop Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who Will you pray with me, please? O oh, Holy One, we are a divided country, torn in two every four years when we realize the extent of our differences and the passions of our convictions. I implore that you Unite us, O oh God, because we are also a united country called to transfer power in peaceful ways, called to trust the voice of the people and respect the leadership that our democracy chooses. We are a United States called to work together, to rise together, to fall together, to work together, to become together, to listen and learn from each other. I implore that you, O oh Lord, will unite us, O oh God because we are also a faithful people in this nation. We are united in you as Christians. We proclaim that we are united in Christ. We are a people who are part of something bigger than our differences, bigger than our candidates, bigger than our political parties, bigger than even our own nationalities. We are called to follow Jesus in word, thought, and deed, loving and welcoming our neighbor, loving ourselves, and proclaiming love and fairness for all God's people. Lord, I implore that you will unite us. Unite us O oh God, in the work that is before us, whether this week we rejoice or, or we, weep, we weep at the outcome from, from this past election, we call upon you, O oh Holy One, to unite us in our healing Unite us in our learning and, and listening. Unite us in our prayers for all our leaders as, as they embrace new challenges, new roles, new rules. Unite us in our calling to commit ourselves ever more faithfully to the message of hope. We uniquely have been called to proclaim and most of all, God, unite us in our journey as we step beyond the campaign season and step into the life that you 
ever call us toward. May we look forward with hope to the day when we can behold with wonder the great things we have co-created co with you. For we pray all this in the name of Jesus, the servant leader who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. Hi friends, it's Pastor Katie and it's time for children's time today. I am wearing my favorite accessory, no joke, absolutely being honest, this is my favorite accessory. Are you ready for it? It needs a reveal. Now, do you know what this is called? This is a fanny pack. I am a huge fan of fanny packs because you can hold everything you need in it and there's no pressure on your back. It just sits right on your hips or on your fanny and it's perfect holding everything that you need. Let me show you some of the things in my fanny pack. I have post-it notes. You never know when you're going to make a note. Oh, I've got some pins and a Sharpie. I have a highlighter, all important things. Let's see, ooh, I've got tape. And if I was at camp, I'd probably have duct tape too. Yep, some tape in there. Let's see, ooh, I have my trusty ruler, which can help me in this particular time know exactly how far away six feet happen to be. Let's see what else I have. I have my mask, it's a backup mask. That way if the one that I'm wearing gets wet or I can't use it, it's got everything I need on it all of my things. And the best part is it all fits right here in my fanny pack and I am ready to go. Now today's parable is all about being ready. It's about having yourself, your spirit, your heart ready to share God's love and grace at any and every opportunity. And I know getting ready is hard. I'm not a morning person. It's hard for me to get ready. And so I do my best the night before to be sure I have my clothes picked out and what I need to take to work ready for me and to have my day laid out so that when I wake up, I'm ready to go. Sometimes it's hard for me to be ready to go on a trip. I have to think about all the things I need so I make a list so that I am ready and prepared to go. Are you ready? 
Now, being ready to share God's love and grace is a little bit different. It means that we have to spend time in prayer and time in studying God's word and time in community and in service. When we do these things, we experience God's love and grace in abundant ways so that when somebody meets us, we can share that love and grace with someone else. Are you ready? Now, I don't have a spiritual fanny pack for you to have today, but my hope and prayer is that you will take time to be ready so that no matter what comes, you can share God's love. Would you pray with me? God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for these children and all the children of our community and for the wonderful reminder today, Lord, to be ready to share you and your love everywhere and every time we can. Help us to spread your goodness and your mercy and bless these children. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The gospel um, lesson for today is found in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now, five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps, but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight, there was a cry. Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids caught up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaid said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oils, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went with them into the wedding. The, then the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know the day or the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, as we gather around God's holy word together, we hear the parable of the 10 bridesmaids and are reminded that we are called to be sure that there's oil in our lamp, ever ready to serve as God's hands and feet. But before we begin, let's spend a moment in prayer together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your word that challenges us and inspires us and calls us to faith. We thank you for the call, Lord, to always be ready to serve as your hands and feet and ask that today you would hide me behind the cross so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. Our rock, our redeemer, amen, amen. Every summer I go to the beach with my extended family and we're a big family, a family that has kind of these generations that intermix with each other. I'm the oldest of one of the generations and the youngest happens to be a five-year-old. So it's quite a confusion when we go places, quite chaotic. Anyway, as we go, it's hard to get a large group of people to all do the same thing at the same time. And that's a big struggle when we're talking about making sure that everybody has suntan lotion on and everybody's got their bathing suits on and everybody's got everything they need to go to the beach and is ready at the same time. Well, last year was particularly difficult because instead of being at our regular place, COVID had us somewhere completely different. And this time there was a longer walk to get to the beach, which meant we really all did have to be ready. There was no room for stragglers behind. I had come down and I had warned everybody, we're taking the kids to the beach, get them dressed, get them ready. And I'd gone upstairs to get myself dressed and ready. I came downstairs and I reminded them, okay, 
we're getting ready to go to the beach, pack a snack and a water bottle. We're getting ready to go. And I went back upstairs to make sure that my children were ready. We all traipsed downstairs and I put sunscreen on all of my kiddos and I leaned my head out from the porch and I said, okay guys, be sure that you're ready. And as I was walking to the door, hurting the youngest of the cats, I turned to find my college age cousin there in his pajamas. Nicholas, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm eating breakfast. I said, we're going to the beach. He said, now? No one told me. Are you ready? Are you ready? I think about that story as we think about the challenge of being ready. Often it's a problem for us to make sure that we're ready because we don't know what's coming. Often it's a problem for us to be ready because we're unsure about what might be expected of us. Often it's hard for us to get ready because we haven't even had breakfast yet and we're still in our pajamas. Are you ready? Now this particular parable is the second in a series of four in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is talking about being ready for the second coming of Christ. He uses this imagery of a lamp which would have felt familiar. We hear it in our Old Testament. We hear about it in the book of Psalms. This particular lamp was probably made of clay and about the size of a cereal bowl. It probably had one wick on the inside and oil that kind of floated in the bowl. Periodically, you'd have to trim the wick so that it would burn brightly, so that it wouldn't smoke excessively, and you would have to be sure that there was enough oil in your lamp for this light to burn. Now in this parable, a parable of 10 bridesmaids, we hear that five of these women are wise. The kind of wisdom described here is practical. It's not an educational knowledge that would have been achieved by a particular amount of learning. This is about practical life. Five of them are ready. They have what they need. Even in the midst of the most difficult circumstances, now they've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this wedding to really begin. They've been waiting for the bridegroom to come. Five of them are ready. Five of them are wise, but five are foolish. They aren't living prudently, they aren't living wisely, they're not evil, they're not painted in that kind of space. Instead, they're seen as careless, unprepared. They haven't discerned what might be needed, they haven't taken the time to check to be sure as the day gets longer, as the wait becomes longer, that they have everything they might need for the entire night. No, these five are foolish. Now, all ten of these bridesmaids sleep. It's important to know that they aren't in trouble for sleeping, that the sleeping is not what the problem really is. But when they awake, it's after midnight and they go to trim their oils. Five of them have enough for the celebration and five of them realize that they will be short. The five foolish before they went to bed didn't make sure that they had enough oil. They didn't ask, they didn't think, they didn't plan. And so stuck in this bind, they turn to the five that have enough and they say, would you share with us? But there's a problem. If they share, there won't be enough for everyone. Now, this is where this parable in particular gets uncomfortable for us. And I think this is one of the great gifts of our parables. They should make us uncomfortable. They should make us discern and think and reflect. We shouldn't just read them and move on. We should sit with what makes us uncomfortable. And for us, at least for me, it's this truth that if these five who were wise share with the ones who are foolish, no one will have enough. And so they say to the five who are foolish, go off and find an oil dealer. And there'll be one that's open. There's a wedding celebration after all. It's the middle of the night, but the whole town is awake waiting for this celebration. And so they go off in search of oil. They go off in search of what they need. They go off in search of what they were not prepared for. And while they are gone, the bridegroom comes and the door is shut and the five who are foolish miss the opportunity. They miss the opportunity to be part of the party, to be part of the celebration, to be part of the presence with the bridegroom. Now there's this terrible finality to this parable. And I think it's one that's important for us to think about. Sometimes we are going to miss an opportunity Sometimes the door is going to be shut. Sometimes the reality is because we were not prepared, there will indeed be a consequence. That is the reality of where this parable leads us. And it's easy for us to cast this particular parable into a category of something that is eschatological, only about end times, only about the triumphant and final return of Jesus. It's easy for us to set it there, make sure that you've claimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that will be enough. But for us today, 
but for us as a people who believe in the inbreaking of the kingdom of God, but for us as a people who believe in the movement of the Spirit here and now, for us as a people who work for the kingdom of God, not just to be in heaven, but to also be here on earth, we have a call in this parable to be ready. That yes, there will be a time for rest. Yes, we will fall asleep. That yes, sometimes the waiting will be so long it will feel like it is never coming. But that even in those spaces and perhaps especially, we should make sure that there is enough oil in our lamp that we are ready. Now, this week was hard. Hard to focus, hard to hear, hard to see how divided our country and our community is. And the hardness isn't over. I believe it's barely begun. And so the question is, how is the oil in your lamp? You know, end of term came for Frederick County students on Friday, which at least at our house meant a flurry of emails of forgotten assignments and questioning if the kids were actually gonna turn in all of their work. It meant messages from teachers and administrators. It meant us all being at the end of our rope. How is the oil in your lamp? Pandem pandemic fatigue has set in as we all long for normalcy, but we aren't there yet. We have a duty and a call to keep each other safe, to protect the vulnerable, to love one another. How is the oil in your lamp? So we've been doing grocery pickup where I order on my phone and then go to pick up and they bring the groceries out to my car. I got in there a little bit early, not much, but a little bit early and I was startled to hear the knock on my window that my order was done ahead of time. As I was making my way to the back of the car to pop the trunk for the person to load our groceries, she looked at me for a second and she said, are you okay? I said, I, I think so. She goes, no, you, you look tired, are you okay? I said, I am tired. There's a lot going on, there's a lot that's uncertain. There's just a lot. I am feeling overwhelmed, thank you for asking. And she said, can I pray for you today? Now she didn't stop there and pray, but the fact that she took a moment to see how I was doing, took a moment to check in on a person where the relationship could have purely been transactional, took a moment to ask, that friend shows me that there was oil in her lamp. The reality is there are going to be lots of spaces and places in the next few weeks, in the next few months, in the next few years, where we as God's people need to have oil in our lamp. We need to have kindness and mercy and justice and hope built up so that we are ready for whatever comes. We need to be looking and seeking and sharing in ways that build and witness the kingdom of God so that when the door is open, we offer mercy. So that when the door is open, we offer grace. So that when the door is open, we come our lamp lit, offering the kindness and goodness of God so that when the door is open, we don't miss the movement of God around us. Because the truth is, there is a celebration going on every day. Every day in places all over the world. God's spirit, the movement of God, the community of believers, the kingdom of heaven is breaking in. Every day there are wedding celebrations taking place. And many of us have not taken the time to make sure we have enough oil in our lamp. That we're ready to be part of the party. We're off in search of a dealer to make sure we've spent enough time in the word or to go fix the fact that we haven't spent enough time in community or go fix the fact that we haven't been praying the way that God has called us to when this moment passes us by. And my hope, my prayer for us in this season as God's people, as we reflect on this calling that God has entrusted us with, is that we would not be afraid to be ready for whatever God brings our way. Chances are there will be no way to predict it, but it will be a way of celebrating the kingdom here and now, not just someday. This week, as you share God's love and grace, be ready, looking out, seeking out, sharing out God's love and grace. Let's pray. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you, Lord, for the ways that you remind us to keep our oil ready. Lord, we confess that there are times when our oil is empty, when we aren't ready, when we haven't taken the time to care for your people and we miss out on what you are doing, Lord. We know that you are still working and moving, that the kingdom of God is still breaking in, but we have missed some of the party because we haven't been ready. And so we ask that this week, Lord, you would help us to see, you'd help us to hear, that you'd help us to feel those spaces and places 
where you are moving, where the door is open, where the party has begun, where we can share your hope and your healing. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. the oil in your lamp, friends? Are you ready to see and to share God's love and grace everywhere you go? My hope and prayer is that you will be, that you'll be ready to share healing, that you'll be ready to share love, that you'll be ready to work for justice so that God's love and grace might be everywhere in this world. Hear now your benediction. As you go, may you go in peace. May you go with God's peace and wherever you go and as best you can, go to share and to spread that peace. Amen. <music>